So if you've suffered a concussion and you're wondering, do I also have intracranial hypertension? Do I need to be treating that? What's going on? There are a couple ways that you could start to think about it. So three things that would cause intracranial hypertension that may come after a head injury, um, but may not be relative to the concussion itself, but more the other things that kind of go with hitting your head or getting in a car accident or having a whiplash. So number one, you could have swelling in the brain. So if you're kind of directly after a concussion, you're having swelling, um, that can cause increased tension within the skull, so intracranial hypertension. Easy way to be able to see that is typically through a CT scan or an MRI. Those are commonly done in the hospital after uh, a significant head injury. A lot of times they'll show a midline shift or be able to see swelling within the brain. So that can be the number one way to cause it. The other two are very similar, they're both fluid that aren't draining out of the brain effectively. So number one, this would be cerebrospinal fluid. So our brain makes cerebrospinal fluid within the brain, and then it circulates. And one of the ways it circulates is by going down and draining into the spinal cord, kind of like going down into a toilet. But if we have an interruption between the function of our skull and our neck, where there is a misalignment or something gets moved or, or compressed, then we can see a problem draining that cerebrospinal fluid. So we're making it in the brain, but it's not able to drain in the normal way it would, and that can cause symptoms as well. One of the first ways that shows up is we can actually start to see changes in the optic nerve. So when someone looks in the back of your eye on the fundus, it'll look swollen, or we can also see it with an ocular CT where we see changes in the density of the, the retina fibers in the back, so the way the retina works. And then the third is fluid related to blood flow. And this would be venous blood or blood that's draining from inside the head back out into the neck. Same thing can occur where we can occlude the jugular veins, one on either side, usually the internal jugular veins, and that can cause this buildup of pressure inside the head. The reason that it feels worse when you lay down is because when you lay down, you're allowing that blood to more easily flow into the head and you're going to have more of a likelihood of having that pulsatile sensation um, because we're not able to drain the head effectively. So if you've had a concussion and you're having symptoms like that, it may not be from the actual injury to the brain tissue itself unless it's swollen, but we may see actually the change between um, the relationship of the skull and the neck and how those two things are allowing drainage of fluid from the head.